Hey, what's going on, guys? It's me, Train Man, and welcome back to the Zombie Train, episode 187. I feel like these episodes fly by these days. Wow. Okay, so, uh, here, 187, we have a question from the RBMN Productions, otherwise known as Chris. Uh, he asked, hey, what happened to the RNN steam engines, meaning 425, 2102, 1098, and 113? Now, of those, the one I am not explicitly familiar with is 1098, uh, but I should bring up my documents as to where, uh, well, basically my documents as to, okay, these, uh, my, my coverage of these engines, so to speak, because, of course, I am not omnipotent or all-knowing or anything like that. I don't, I, I do a very good job at losing track of these engines, um, which is why I don't do everything myself in the Zombie Train Incorporated. It's why I didn't do my any, everything myself in the Zombie Train, period. Uh, hell, a lot of death in the zombie uh, apocalypse was led by people thinking, oh, I'll just survive on my own. Which is doable. It's doable. But it is not in the slightest easy. Uh, there's, there's a tipping point where it starts to get harder when you get multiple people on, especially if you're moving around. But Anyways, so... Back in 2012, which is when I made this, uh, this here spreadsheet, or, yeah, sort of as best I could, we had 1098 stored, uh, 2102 stored, and, uh, 425 running, as well as 113, which, uh, should be listed here somewhere, but, uh, I, I know what was going on with 113 at this point, it was... Uh, in fact, it's listed as operational, probably because the spreadsheet was taken a little bit afterwards. Uh, something worth noting is that despite the small amount of time between uh, me figuring out where all the engines were and uh, the Great Panic, which it's the other way around, the Great Panic occurred first, uh, but, uh, as you might expect, virtually nothing got done on these engines until we went to get them uh, with the Zombie Train Incorporated. What I mean to say is, their status as listed on my document here is basically how they were when we got them no matter what. So, Cold Country, I will point out, was not terrible for survival. Uh, and, of course, there was a lot of fatality, a lot of death in, all over the world due to the zombie apocalypse. However, uh, partially due to the terrain, the way population spreaders, or population centers were spread out, and uh, simply the people. Uh, there was a lot of hardiness that just sort of sprung up. Of course, coming with that was the uh, lack of, or rather, yeah, well, lack of willingness to, to cooperate when we came around. But thankfully, nobody stood too far in the way of us getting these engines when the Zombie Turner Corporate went looking for them. Uh, as far as I understand, actually, 113 was, well, somebody made an attempt at patching it up. Somebody made an attempt at getting it the hell out of there, but uh, we found it sort of out on the line. And it was fortunate that it didn't suffer any sort of boiler explosion after being left. Because what appears to have happened is somebody... Uh, basically fixed what they could, took off on the engine, didn't make it very far, uh, and then it was forced to either abandon it or was killed on the spot. I don't know. That was one of the engines that was difficult to find. Uh, of course, all these engines, being surviving engines, being very good engines, uh, were brought into service under the Zombie Train Incorporated. Uh, you know, and they're not in too terrible a condition, all of them, anyways. Some of them needed a little bit of work, some of them needed a lot of work. But, uh, it wasn't particularly hard, especially, you know, 113 was operating-ish, uh, 425 was operating, uh, 2102, uh, 2102, I think, if I recall correctly, we managed to drag it, uh, drag it dead out, uh, basically out of coal country, this great distance, uh, well, no, no, not quite. It got to Steamtown, and we stopped it at Steamtown, and it was one of the engines that we pulled out of there because Steamtown became a collection point, 
so we had all four of these engines up there at one point, as well as a bunch of others uh, from the general area, and of course the ones from Steamtown as well. But these, uh, they would they would end up being brought to Selkirk, which I know is not a steam shop, but the ones that could operate there, you know. But basically, Scranton was not the best place to be. Scranton was not the best place to be. It's it's a fairly well-inhabited area, or it was, and on top of that, the city already proved problematic when when we were there previously. So, 425, in fact, did a lot of the heavy lifting with getting 1089, or 1098, was it? I keep screwing up the numbers. Uh, 1098, sorry. And 2102 out of there, which, you know, wasn't easy. We, we brought a group in via probably 3254, if not one of the Burks, uh, because I was present for this operation. Almost ran into 113. That's where we found her. Uh, and then managed to round them all up. And then, you know, we, we left a small team there, and they did what they could to gather the locals. And... Of course, it was never people that I knew, and most of them weren't particularly familiar with steam engine operation, but uh, most of them, I gather, were just happy to be alive. We had to do our best to avoid population centers or clear out areas when we could. And by we, I'm not talking about me, because I wasn't there. Uh, again, I brought the main group in, because I knew these engines were there, and I knew they were in proximity to Steamtown. Uh, and, again, that was being devised as a sort of collection point once the Zombie Train Incorporated got off the ground. Again, we did not touch these engines until the Zombie Train Incorporated uh, came into existence. But they were, they were close grabs. So, that team moved in there. They started, uh, they brought 425 into steam. They got the two engines movable. And they hooked together basically everything they could manage with just a single trip of 425 and ran it out of there. 113 was the one that came back around after 425 been, had been brought up to uh, Scranton and it basically picked up everything miscellaneous. Any, any cars that were in good condition that could roll uh, and that were useful to us and what have you. The interesting thing to point out is, during the zombie train, before the Incorporated, we had gone down into coal country, apparently not quite far enough, we had gone down into coal country intent on establishing, or rather, reoperating a mine, or, you know, reopening a mine, which was good. Uh, we had, we then had a source of coal for some time, although I believe it was not in Pennsylvania, it may have been in West Virginia that the mine was. That that lasted only a few months, actually, before various things got to them, of course, mostly zombies. Uh, and they were sort of off in the middle of nowhere and didn't have easy ways to get resupply. I don't recall knowing they needed resupply. And, in fact, what I think happened, or, you know, what the quote-unquote forensics had to say about it, was their radio was out long before, you know, long before they were gone. Uh, I don't know if they were trying to fix it. I don't know how far along that was. But I know that, you know, it was one of these little mines out there that they had, that we were trying to get back into operation, got back into operation, used it for a couple of months, and then one time we came back around and everyone was gone. Everyone was dead. But, uh... That region is a very expansive and windy place. It's not... I, I won't say it's not hospitable for steam locomotives, but it was nice to get everything out of there as best uh, we could. Now, afterwards, you know, once the Zombie Train Incorporated got in our feet, uh, I believe what ended up happening was those engines sort of had a little bit of a diaspora. 1098 is a 10-wheeler. Uh, you know, 2102 is a northern, of course. It's a T-1. Uh, 113, for those who don't know, is Chris's favorite 060, largest uh, 060 class ever built, I believe. Uh, and 
425 is a Pacific, I believe. It is. Uh, I know it's a Pacific. I believe it's a... Is it... It's a ball one. Okay. Okay, never mind. It's a G1, I guess. Anyways. These, um... These engines, you know... Uh, the T-1 served us well in cold country. Uh, that did not go particularly far. We would have liked to use that engine on some bigger distance trips, but we needed at least one very large engine to, to deal with coal. And Scranton, when we sort of buckled down a little bit, we used a little bit of the facility there, but we got everything out of there that we could, and we ended up using the yards as a collection point for coal. Um, which meant that most of the time they would be abandoned. You'd just have a train coming through every once in a while. And when 2102 was not in the mountains hauling coal directly, 2102 was hauling coal from uh, calling, hauling coal trains from Scranton out, uh, you know, either through Big Ham, through Binghamton and up towards Selkirk, which was a major port of call for the Samba Train Incorporated, or across and down and into New England, because that was important. Uh, either way, we'd always have to do the Selkirk hurdle because a they're freight trains, and b we're not going through New York City. That's damn sure. Uh, and the larger population centers down on the coast, sort of made it difficult for us to gain any sort of port in order to transport coal that way. I believe we did... Ah, that's not relevant. Anyways. We, we managed to get one of the larger ports. I think it may have been somewhere in... I think it may have been somewhere in Baltimore. Uh, we were able to load coal onto ships that way for a very short period of time. And part of it was due to the fact that the infrastructure there was terribly damaged because the coal piles burned. We managed to patch them up, use them, then decided, we're not doing this, moved elsewhere. It was too much of a hassle to stay on the coast in those major cities. Um, 1098, I need to know a little bit more about that engine. Hold on, it's a CPR engine. 1098. Because what matters here is... Oh, it looks like a pretty beefy 10-wheeler. Yeah, oh, this thing. This thing, um... Where is it? Okay. Well... Yeah, okay. It wasn't fast enough to become a planes runner, but it didn't have too much pulling power. We needed stuff with more pulling power uh, to do... Well an awful lot of the work. And so, 1098 fell into a class of engines that uh, we didn't want to use for switching because they were too large. Uh, and we couldn't really use for major transport because they were too small. Uh, she fell into an extras category. And I'm not sure ever made it west of Chicago area, because we didn't run to Chicago. Uh, but there is a chance that she made it to the Rocky Mountains a time or two. Getting across the, the plains is not an easy task for a number of reasons, but when you need something moved across the plains and you need it moved now, and don't get me wrong, there was not a lot of... there was not a huge volume of things to move. Uh, these The little engines like that came in handy. Uh, 113, of course, became a pretty hefty switcher, uh, working in places around Scranton, setting up coal trains, and running out when we needed it to. Not that that was its forte, because it couldn't exactly get places massively quickly, but it was good. Uh, the, the crew that operated 113 ended up being the crew that basically held down the house at Scranton, uh, because the place was constantly in trouble. The place was constantly in trouble. I wanted to be out of there as quickly as possible, but it was such a strategically valuable location that we could not... Uh, it, w it was basically a state of limbo. We couldn't leave it, but we really didn't want to stay until, you know, the full force of the army got in there and cleared the town. Uh, 425 ended up running just trains. Mostly, you know, not necessarily through coal country, but being the class and power of engine that she was, she sort of ran everywhere. 
Uh, never over the Rockies, though. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and keep asking the questions. I will see you some more next week. Train Man out. I forgot to talk about what we were doing today. Oh well, watch the video, why don't you? Thank <laughs> you.